I'm working on restoring this injection molding machine that's behind me. One of the things that came with this is this control box, which is, I believe, from the 1960s. This thing is huge and it's heavy and it's really antiquated. So what I want to do is modernize this, replace this with brand new electronics and a touchscreen. First thing I want to do is mention that I have a new microphone, as you can see here. And during the video, you'll probably notice that there are cases where there's some noise, etc. I'm working on adjusting the settings to get the microphone to work better. I have this new microphone because the old one kept it breaking. And sometimes I would accidentally push a button that would cause it to be just a single channel instead of two channels. And for people who were wearing headphones, that was definitely an issue. So what I'm trying to do, as I mentioned, is replace the electronics. And in a previous episode, I had used this screen here, which is a seven inch touch screen. Now this screen has a lot of intelligence built into it, a storage card, etc. And all of the graphics are actually stored on here and then the controller talks to this and changes the graphics that you see. Now this made it easier to write the code on the microcontroller because I didn't have to worry about rendering all the graphics. But it was still a lot of code, so I started to rethink things. Now the other thing is, one of the plans that I have is to make this controller that I'm working on available commercially as a product. I should say product in quotes because I doubt I'll ever sell enough for it to be worth the time that I'm putting into this. But, you know, it's my hobby. So this is where I was at before, and what you're going to see by the end of this video let me just power this on. I have a touchscreen. This is an Android tablet. And that is, this is going to be communicating to the circuitry via Bluetooth. Now, this is a much larger screen. And it's really larger than I need it to be. So I've actually ordered a 7-inch tablet as well, which is a lot cheaper. And throughout the video, I'm going to be mentioning costs again because I'm thinking of this as a commercial product and trying to keep the, the price down. This is a project that I started working on some time ago and I'll have a card up above to the video on this. The idea is to create a controller for a small injection molding machine. And I spent quite a bit of time on this. This is a special screen that's attached to this microcontroller. And the screen has a lot of intelligence in it itself, so all of the graphics that you see here are coming from memory that is on the display itself. And then what the microcontroller is doing is just sending instructions back and forth so that I can, for example, tell when I've pushed a button and it's still in, uh, so I can do things such as, you know, it's not doing anything with these, but the idea is that I could increase or decrease the injection time and then I set it up so that I could type in, for example, a temperature, and then that would show up here. That part, I don't remember exactly which of these are communicating with the microcontroller and which are not, but the point is, I created this interface using a graphics program, actually it's PowerPoint in my case. Uh, output that, and then used a graphics program to create different overlays that had various things in different states. So this took a bit of work. The thing is, if I want to change anything about the interface, then I have to basically redo all of the graphics, move the different rectangles where you can push and make a lot of changes there, and then I have to change the code on the microcontroller. Now, the microcontroller itself does not have any functionality beyond what you see here, and this already took quite a bit of work. So I was revisiting this and decided to look at other options. What got me started on this journey is I happened to stumble across this framework called Avalonia UI, which is a way to build cross-platform applications that have fairly attractive and rich user experiences. This is based on .NET, which is something that I use at work, so I'm very familiar with it. It's also based on XAML, which is also a technology that I'm really familiar with. And you can see it supports a whole bunch of different platforms which happens to include the Raspberry Pi. So I started to look into the Raspberry Pi. As a reference, the touchscreen that I'm using today, the one that I just showed you, is 
a Nextion display that cost over $100. So the Raspberry Pi LCD, which is a touchscreen, about the same size, was quite a bit less. So this looked good so far. Then I looked into the Raspberry Pi. I don't need a particularly powerful one, so the, the Pi 3B Plus or the Pi 3A would be just fine. You can see that this is $35, so I decided, all right, I'll go ahead and order one. And then I ran into this. You can see this price is definitely not the list price. It's considerably higher than the list price. And I was wondering, what on earth is going on? And by the way, one of the reasons this was attractive to me is because not only does this have an output there for a display, but it also has output pins that would allow me to control the various functions of the injection molding machine directly from here. So I could have an all-in-one solution. That was the thinking until I saw this price. What I discovered looking into this is there's currently a shortage, and so this is scalpers pricing, and it's going to be some time before the shortage goes away. And as a result, I decide to investigate other options. The next idea that I had was to start with an Android tablet. Avalonia and .NET both support Android, so that means that the development of the interface and the experience would be a lot easier. I did some searching and found that the prices were about $70 for a 10-inch screen, which was fabulous. That's a larger screen. I did some additional searching and discovered I could get 7-inch ones for even less, for about $45. And so I decided to splurge. I didn't order this one. I ordered a different one. The next thing that I decided to use is a Raspberry Pi Pico. As you can see, this is a $4 device, so already I'm less than either of the other two options at about $75, rounding things off. The Pico would allow me to control the various functionality of the injection molding machine. And then the idea that I had is to use USB. So USB serial is a way that you can communicate between the microcontroller and some other computer, such as the Android tablet. As you can see, I purchased an Android tablet and I have it connected via a serial cable to the Raspberry Pi Pico. On the Pico, I've put a simple program that sends a message across the serial cable to here. And I have a program running, which allows me to see what is coming across the serial port. So I'll go ahead and open the serial port. You can see it connected to a CDC device, and now I'm getting this message. This message is the one that I put into the code that is sending it from the Pico to here. Now, there were two problems with this. The first one is, you can see it says CDC device. The code that I used to try to communicate with the Raspberry Pi over the USB serial, I could not get to work. After doing some research, it looks like there are some bugs with the code in regards to CDC devices. And so I thought about trying to figure out how to fix it, which meant learning a lot, which meant a lot of time. But there's another problem that was the more significant problem. And that is that while it's connected to the Raspberry Pi Pico, it's not charging. So it's running off of battery power. That means eventually, and after not too long, this is going to run out of battery power. That means I need to have not just the USB connection you see here, but I also have to add a USB hub, a powered USB hub, and that is going to increase the cost. Now, if that were the only problem, the power issue, I probably would have continued in that direction. But because that wasn't only the problem and I couldn't get the code to work, I decided to rethink things. So next up was to switch to this. This is a, called an ESP32, and it's actually this module right here. The rest is supporting circuitry. I know this is used by other products such as TouchDRO. And one of the nice things about it is that, is that it supports both Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi. Because it supports Bluetooth, that means that I can use Bluetooth, at least that was the theory, from the tablet to here. What I've shown you so far is not exactly in the sequence uh, in which I did things. One of the things that I did earlier on in the first few days when I had this idea was to see how quickly I could recreate the interface using Avalonia UI. And so what you're seeing here is and this is what it looks like behind the scenes to create this right here, and this is the actual interface. The other thing that I did is I set this up so that I could run it locally on my computer, try things out, and see how they were working. So this is currently building it, and then as soon as it finishes building it, it'll launch it, 
And then, as you can see here, this is a fairly good representation of what I had before, but you can see now that I've added functionality to be able to actually have these numbers change as I click on these various buttons. What I've done here is I've moved the board to a breadboard. It's actually two breadboards, as you can see here, but I've removed the power strip from one of the breadboards. These breadboards are actually connected as three different pieces, but it looks like it's one piece and then it has adhesive backing on the bottom. So I just cut through the adhesive backing, took one of the power strips off this side, and then put them together. It has some tabs here and then it has some slots there that these tabs go into. And the reason I did that is because this is too wide to fit within this area right here with the pins available on both sides. When you put this in there, the pins will only be visible on one side and not the other because this is so wide. So by putting two of these breadboards side by side like this, I'm able to span across this, which gives me a greater gap than I have there, and therefore have access to the pins on both sides. Now this has a couple things on it. It has two LEDs that represent applying pressure to the injection cylinder and to the clamping cylinder, as well as a sensor, which is in the form of just a push button switch right now. This will allow me to test the functionality at my desk and get everything working before I hook it up to the actual machine. What you see here is the breadboard that I just described and this connection here is just for power and you'll notice that there is no connection at all, physical connection to the tablet. So the tablet is communicating with this via Bluetooth. Now these two LEDs correspond to these two indications here. So if you watch when I press run, first it's going to turn that on, and then after about a second delay it's going to turn this one on. And then it's going to go through a sequence that I'll explain next. But I want you to notice these two lights and then those two go on at the same time. And then after a while this one is going to go off, as did that, and then this one is going to go off again. So now let me explain what's going on here with this interface. So the idea is the initial delay when, after I press run is to wait for it to clamp. As I mentioned, eventually I'm going to have a sensor that determines when it clamps, and this will wait until it's received that indication from the sensor. And then this right here controls how long after it starts injection, it waits before it releases pressure from the injection cylinder. So that's what this is about. These two right here control how long it cools. In other words, how long after we've released pressure from the injection cylinder, it waits before it opens the clamp. So that's what this is about here. And you can see you can change both of these. Now, the idea that I have here is if you press start run, so let me do that, and then you press stop, it's like an emergency stop. It immediately opens the clamp, it uh, removes pressure from the injection cylinder, it basically goes back to the waiting state. This is set up to be a single run, so it's a single shot. Uh, that's all that I have working at the moment. And then later on, this will be for, once I implement it, basically fully automatic mode. Now for fully automatic mode, I want to make sure that I know when the part has been injected so that you don't close the clamp and therefore you don't close the mold on a part that's still in the mold. So that's functionality that I'm going to be adding. Now what you see here, including building this, all took less time than what you saw with the Nexteon display. Because I can write this very quickly, because I have a lot of experience with it, this went very, very fast. Likewise, the code that is on here is just minimal code, so it was very easy to write and didn't take me long at all. Now, the nice thing about this pivot that I made, therefore, is now I can add more and more functionality to this relatively quickly, especially compared to the way that I was doing things before. If you are interested in something like this for your own small injection molding machine, what functionality would you like? Please comment below and let me know. Before I move on, I'd like to thank my new patron. His name is Below. I really appreciate the support I'm getting on Patreon. It helps me support this type of thing. One of the things I mentioned, for example, is that I want to make this into a product, which is why I'm paying attention to costs. But 
I doubt I'll ever sell enough to probably even make minimum wage. So this isn't really about making money. This is about, you know, offsetting the expense of my hobby a little bit, but it's also fun. I enjoy this process. One of the other things I want to mention is that I ordered the 10 inch tablet and after using the 10 inch tablet, it seems a little bit large for what I need. I don't really need the real estate. So I've ordered a seven inch tablet, which is just $45 and that'll be here sometime soon. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching. See you next time.